Circles are pointless. Literally, they have no points and they're empty on the inside. I mean, they're just a big curve, right? But once you start adding segments on the inside, you can really start to appreciate how powerful a simple circle is. Let's explore this example over here that demonstrates circular length very nicely. Rectangle ABCD is inscribed in a semicircle with diameter FE as shown. Let DA equal 16. FD9, AE9. Find the area of this shaded region, ABCD. Hmm. 16, 9. So where, let's take the center of the semicircle. It's going to be at the midpoint there. And notice we can break up the 16 into two parts, 8 and 8. And then we can see this is going to be 17, right? The total length. So the reason we're trying to draw the center in is because the center is where all radiuses are emitted from. And the main thing that a circle tells you, fundamentally, a circle tells you that the center is equidistant from all points, every single point on the circle. So to extract information from a circle, the key is, is draw the center and connect that to all of these, all of the points connected to points on the circle. And the reason we do this is because now we know these are all radii, so they're all going to be equal. So first of all, what is this radius? From here to here, notice how that's 17. So that means that this over here will also be 17, and this as well, because, well, they're both radii of circle. What is the area of ABCD? Hmm, that's a rectangle, right? We know that this is 16 hidden right now, 16. So we need to somehow find the height of this rectangle. And I see a 17, I see an 8, and because this is a rectangle, we've got 90 degree angles here, 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 and here. 8, 15, 17 triangles. That's a Pythag triple right there. So if you didn't know Pythag triples, you could have just done Pythag theorem, square root 17 squared minus 8 squared equals height, right? That's one way, and you would have gotten 15. But a clever way is to see that, okay, if, if the hypotenuse is 17, one of the legs is 8, then we can immediately see 8, 15, 17, right triangles, that's a Pythag triple. So we know that this is going to be 15 without even using the Pythag theorem. So this height is 15, this base is 16, the area 15 times 16 equals 225, plus 15, which is 240. Okay, well now let's explore this problem over here. A circle centered at C of radius 25 has two parallel chords with lengths shown. To the nearest integer, what is the distance between these chords? Again, the fundamental thing that a circle tells you that literally that the information a circle gives you is that the center is equidistant from every point and that's kind of the key idea here the center is equidistant from every point and the key is most of these points are kind of irrelevant like in this case we see the radius is 25 right now this radius oh sure it's 25 but does this really help us i mean this is a point floating in midair that we really could not care less about but these points they're not irrelevant. They're, they're a point and they're not pointless. So as we're, what we wanna try and do is draw the radii to all of the important points. So all the important points over here are these ones, as you can see. These are all going to be 25. Isn't that great? 25, 25. Now let's use a different color. Purple it is, okay. 25, 25. And I'm hoping kind of color code it so it makes it easier to understand. Okay. So, okay. So essentially we're trying to find the distance between these chords. Hmm. How do we find this distance basically? How do we do that? Interesting. 
So if we're trying to find this distance, what we a strategy we can try and do is, well, try to use the information we're provided. This 48, this 24, how, how can it even help us? So for now, I'm going to erase this. So we can focus on this, this triangle here. 25, 25, 48. When you're stuck on a problem, geometry especially, look for the information we have not used yet. This 48 condition is one of them. 48, 25, 25. That's an isosceles triangle, isn't it? These angles are going to both be equal to the same thing. So a good strategy to do here is that we can drop an altitude down, draw a height of this triangle. And the reason we want to draw a height of this triangle is since it's isosceles, it's symmetric about both sides, right? And that means that this part is going to be equal to this part. These two parts are equal. And because the whole length is 48, each of those parts will be 24. And I'm just to make it clear, I'm going to draw like this. Both those parts are 24. These are both right angles. Aha, 25, 24. This is why it's good to know Pythag triples. Now I don't have to use Pythag theorem. 7, 24, 25 triangles. So you know immediately off the bat that this is going to be 7. This height will be 7 because 7, 24, 25 right triangles. Cool. Now, what else do we know? 7, 24, 25. That gives, okay, that gives us a distance from the center of the circle to one of the chords. But that's only one of the chords. We're trying to find the distance between both of the chords. So we, we know the distance from C to the this point here, to one of the chords, the center. And we're trying to find this distance. If we essentially, if we could find this distance and we subtracted off this distance, we would find the distance between the chords, right? So what we're essentially now gonna try and do is, we found that to be seven. Let's erase the clutter so we don't make the diagram too messy. Let's now try and find this distance over here. Let's, let's offset it a little bit. I don't want to coincide it with the seven. So let's try and find the entire segment from here all the way to here. So we know this part was seven. This part from here to here was seven. And now we're trying to find, let's try and find this entire distance from here all the way here. Okay, so let's, like, like we did earlier, we, we need to draw the important radii. That's one of the important radii. That's 25. Another important radii, that's also 25. And notice again, it's a nice isosceles triangle. These angles are equal, it's symmetric. So this part over here, that part's gonna be 12. And this part over here is also going to be 12, right? Because it's symmetric about the middle. Both sides of this triangle are equal. And if we draw the altitude, it's going to be symmetric about it. So 12, 12, 12, 25. Ah, sadly, that's not a Pythag triple. There's no Pythag triples, 12, 25, you can check. So, but don't worry, you can still use the Pythag theorem. It's just a little bit more, it's a little bit slower. So we can, let's, let's call this distance X. Why, right? they should use a highlighter. Let's call this orange distance X. So we have X squared plus 12 squared equals 25 squared, Pythag theorem. X squared plus 144 equals 625. So 625 minus 144. We just do the subtraction, 481. So X squared equals 481. Okay, so what are we essentially trying to find? We're trying to find this distance between, right? This whole distance is x, 
and then this part over here is 7. So to find the distance over here, that's just x minus 7. Because the whole thing, the whole thing from here to here is x, and then the top part is just 7. So to get the bottom part, we just do x minus 7. That's the distance between the chords, of course. But the thing is, we're not trying to solve exactly. It says to the nearest integer. So we're just trying to do, well, if x squared is 481, x cannot be negative, so x is just square root 481. So x minus 7 is square root 481 minus 7. And now we just have to find this to the nearest integer. And this is the distance. Now, what is the nearest integer to 481? Square root 481. Well, if you know your squares, if you memorize your squares, you would know that 22 squared is 484, which is very close to 481. And if you didn't know your squares, you could just see, you could just evaluate a few. You know, 20 squared is about 4, it's, a, it's 400, and then you can find 21 squared, 22 squared, and then just see which one is closer, you know? But if you know your squares, you can save some time and see directly, okay, 22 squared is 484, so this is approximately 22 minus 7, so approximately equal to 15. And 15 is our answer, because it's to the nearest integer. This is going to be 15, about. It's not exactly 15. Okay, and that's it for that problem. And just to summarize, in both of these problems that we did, the key ideas were to draw the important radii, which means draw all the radii that connect the center to a point on the circle, like that. And then use that information, it often involves Pythag theorem, as we see here. In both cases, we use Pythag theorem. And in this problem as well, the key idea was draw these two radii, draw the top two radii, 25, 25, then use Pythag theorem, 7, 24, 25, this is 24, this is 7. And then after that, you do you look at the, this is 25, that's 25, this is 12, right? If you draw the altitude. So then this over here, we can find using Pythag theorem to be about square root 481. So this over here is square root 481. But we're asking for the distance in between. We're asking for this distance over here. And that's just the, big, the total distance minus the top part, which is x minus 7, x minus 7, right? And x minus 7 is this, which is approximately 15. And that's it. But now we're going to take a look at, we're going to take a look at complex shapes. And these are shapes that aren't always one shape, like not circle, quadrilateral. We're going to look at some interesting shapes, like, for example, this, which is not really anything, isn't it? But we have some cool tricks for making it shapes we know how to deal with. Let's explore that in the next video. So check it out right there.